Welcome back to another episode of the Blackout Podcast, ODM Speaks On. Well, today, as you can tell by the caption already, um, you know, our, our good friend, our homie Lucky from Hoodstocks has been in the media a lot lately, right? And it's for a specific video that he's done, obviously, with Lefty Gunplay. You've been hearing about it all this week and so on and so forth. Lucky, a rapper out of Los Angeles, is just doing his thing, going viral. One of the top most talked about uh, Chicano rappers of today. Um, doing his thing, right? Right. So uh, if you haven't seen the whole thing, which you've probably been living under a rock between the feud between him and um, and Lucky from Hoodstocks, then I suggest you go over to Lucky's channel and check that out. But it's everywhere. It's on everybody else's channel. And just like that six minute clip where they go, uh, where they get into it. And my thoughts real quick is about that whole scenario. Here we got you know, 47 year old man, we got a 27 year old man, up and car, uh, up and coming artist, right? Either way, I say the ages because that's a little homeboy. No matter if, if he's a grown ass man, I get it. He is 27, you're grown. But Lucky has, has seen some things as well in his time. That's 20 years on, homie, right there. So that's, that's a young bro, you know what I mean? Or a young nephew or a young little homie, however you want to um, describe it um, compared to Lucky, right? And I feel like as older, uh, homies, we need to, uh, you know, sometimes discipline our younger homies or sometimes, the, uh, um, you know, educate them uh, all the time, educate them. Um, just different, uh, just basically sharing your experience, your life experiences down to the younger generation. And now I know Lefty Gunplay has been through a lot, you know, uh, is, he's done some time from what I understand. He got out. And now he's having a successful career, you know, as of like 30 days in it. So we've all been following him and, and kudos to the homie props to uh, Lefty Gunplay for making his mark in the industry. Now, um, Lucky from Hoodstocks over back onto him. Uh, you know, Lucky has been a podcaster for some time now. As a matter of fact, I mean, I remember I was like, you know, uh, probably one of the first artist i should say that he has had on his platform i know before i was like misfit soto and uh, it was a couple of others i really don't want to get I, i'm just going off top of the head here i know he's been doing um podcasting prior that i got on to it um for a couple of years you know i remember him starting in his house or maybe he even start started before that he had the yellow banner sign whatever behind him if you know you know if you've been watching hoodstocks Shout outs to Lucky and Hoodstock. has been doing his thing. As a matter of fact, when I first came across Lucky's podcast, I was a fan. I, I, I saw this dude talk. I thought he spoke very well. You know what I mean? Uh, he, he can hold a conversation. He was funny as fuck. I think that that was that struck me to Lucky. You know, Lucky was just uh, one of those homies in the room that just cracked jokes all the time. And I don't think you'd ever want to get in a bagging session with dude because he would He'd probably outbag your ass and send you home crying, or it might end up in fist fights or something. But hopefully, it wouldn't come to that, you know, because some people's feelings do get hurt. Um, but with that being said, you know, I was drawn to Lucky's podcast. I had, I think, commented on one of his uh, podcasts in the past, and this was before I got on. And I said, uh, I think he messaged me and he thanked me for watching and you know, subscribing to the channel. I said, yeah, man, genuinely, bro, I fuck with you. Like, I watch your podcast legitimately. Um, I think, uh, and at this time, mind you, I think he was only at maybe 4,000 subscribers or something like that. Uh, definitely on the come up, but again, he had been doing it uh, for a little while. And as you know, if you don't know, in the podcasting game, it could take it could take a while to get up there. I will say that. Um, but lucky, you know, he was consistent with it, and he's been doing it now for I don't know how many years, uh, but uh, he, he's definitely has grown in, in subscribers and and viewership, if you will. And he's also blessed us, me, on my platform here, the Blackout Podcast. He was one of the first to come on uh, after the Lighter Shade of Brown uh, series that we had once we started opening the doors to guests. Him and Tony A, they were the first ones to uh, come on my platform I reached out to. Uh, took him a while, lucky to get on, but he eventually came on because he was a busy guy. You know what I mean? Um, we had scheduled uh, his visit like two years or, or excuse me, two months in advance. And he, he definitely kept his word and he showed up to the podcast. So, uh, 
you know, I, I got to give him kudos for that because I had been on his podcast and he was just returning the favor. And while he was there, he was also educating me as far as the podcasting game because I come from radio, right? And it's a different ball game. It's not so structured to being a podcaster, as you know, some podcasts you watch fully on scripted, you know, they got producers left and right, cameraman, lighting, this and that. And, you know, everything is just you got a paper or you got like a teleprompter. It's just like a live TV show when you got others are just freaking off the dome. They just happen organically and anything can happen. You know what I'm saying? They didn't give him movement. Um, but uh, with that being said, let me fast forward here. Uh, let me go ahead and get into this video. As you could tell by the, as the caption, Lucky recently had uh, Chingo Bling on. All right. And if you don't know who Chingo Bling is, Google him. He was the guy back in, I wanted to say, the 2000s that was doing the parodies, famous for uh, the Tamale Kingpin. Another dude I used to follow. I used to laugh. Me and my primo, uh, Romel, we used to watch his shit. He used to have DVDs. These are the DVD days. And, um, you know, he used to rock the cowboy hat with the big ass uh, Air Jordan boots, botas, whatever. And he did parodies, you know, and, and we thought he was he was hilarious. He was one big walking parody, if you will. So uh, we took lightning liking to, to just that. And, you know, he grew a lot with with his career doing that. And uh, he actually had some songs that uh, we played on on the radio station that, that we were on that I was on 99 one. And I mean, he was known all over, you know, before you knew it, he was kind of just to the point where he almost got signed or maybe he did get signed to a major label. I don't know. You can go check out the uh, Hoodstocks. This one we're about to get into interview for that. He explains it in detail. But uh, anyway, long story short, the man was known for parodies. So me being at a local radio station, he's going to explain it, too. But in a nutshell, you'll hear my side first. I was also doing parodies. I said, man, that's just easy. Like. I was on a local level, and for the Inland Empire, shout out to all my people who watched me on 90, or listened to me on 991 KGGI. You know, I said, look, I'm going to create this character, and uh, I'm basically going to rap a parody. And I had a couple of them. Palatero, Palatero Man. I had I'm in Love With Your Sister. Um, I had another one called Going Caca Too Much, the Paula Deanna joint. And all of these were based off of songs that we were playing. That's what parodies were. These are when they were just starting to bubble before videos started happening, happening to them, right? So here, that's just a little bit about Chingo and Lucky. Together, they're sitting down here. And this is, I believe, the second time that that um, Chingo is on with a Lucky. And, but... He actually mentioned my name, which was kind of uh, uh, interesting, you know. And let's let's just get right into the video, and uh, we'll react to it right now. So basically, I was able to get heard and be discovered by fans without having to sign a bad deal and depend on somebody else to to push me. Um, and also around that time. Uh, what's his name? Uh, ODM from Lighter Shade of Brown. He okay. he was on the radio. I don't know if he still is in Riverside, and he started doing like, kind of like Mexican style parodies with an accent type of thing. And okay. and he did uh he did I'm in love with your sister. Uh, he did um Paletero Man songs like that, but he would never claim it. And somehow, some way. So again, I didn't claim it. I never said this is ODM because it was a character voice, which at the time I didn't even have a name for it. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, when I started rapping, it was more like uh, Palet no tengo bubble gum y no chico stick. It was like an act Mexican accent, if you will. Um, a lot of fools thought I sounded like Little Rob. I don't know. Go listen to the song. You be the judge. Kids will put Chingo Bling on the song, okay. and then they're sharing it. Yeah. So kids are like, oh, shit, new Chingo just dropped. Uh, Paletero, man. Or I'm yeah. in love with your sister. So I kind of got, I don't want to say blamed, but I got labeled yeah. with those songs. So some people... Are like, man, I don't even like Chingo, man, because he got them stupid songs. It's like, really, which which ones? Paletero, man, and yeah. I'm in love with your sister. And I'm like, okay, so really, like, stupid songs. Aren't all parodies stupid? I'm just saying. They're parodies. They're made to be stupid. I don't see how I'm in love with your sister and Paletero, man, where they're the only two stupid ones. 
Maybe it was just a different taste. Obviously it was. You guys be the judge. Go listen to the parodies yourself. Those ain't even me, bro. Like You should have blasted me. Like, homie, that's fucking ODM, bro. Yeah, yeah, I always tell people, it's like, hey, he don't want to claim him, but, you know, he did that for his. Again, I don't know with not wanting to claim it. You know what I'm saying? Here's the deal. And this was my honest thought. I said, man, these are fucking easy. Parodies are fucking easy to write. I'm an MC, first and foremost. I'm a rapper, man. I got fucking gold albums. You know what I'm saying? Like, to do a parody ain't shit. I'm an artist. Of course, I'm able to, to write a parody. I write commercial ads. I write, uh, you know, um, rap jingles when I was in radio. It's for his radio station. And, it, I mean, people like him. A lot of people do well, like him. that's probably why he got fired from They did like him. They liked him so much, it made it to Kiss FM 102.7 in L.A. Ryan Seacrest interviewed me for Palatero, man, in the morning. But let's move on. It's for his radio station, and, it, I mean, people like him. A lot of people do well, like that's probably why he got fired from his radio station. Oh, I don't know. See, Lucky, why'd you have to go and say that, man? Now, if you know Lucky, he a bullshitter. You know what I'm saying? But that was a stupid thing to say. No, I, didn't I, know that. <laughs> I ain't know all Shout that. Out the ODM, See, bro. and he's fucking around. I could take that. You gotta have be able to have thick skin. But sometimes people can't. You feel me? And other people take it as a, as a diss. And that's why shit. This whole internet game, podcasting game, gets twisted and so on and so forth. And and that's why viewers, because we share the same viewers. We may not have the same subscribers, but we do share the same viewers. I'll tell you that us. The Blockout Podcast, H H Hoodstocks, Tony A, Rodium Radio, American Show. They're all in the same menu, though, homie. Yeah, I, I don't want no smoke. I don't want no smoke, Kimfo. And I say that because actually somebody sent me this video. That's how I knew because I, I, wasn't, I wasn't watching this. Down around here, dog. But he's, nah, he's been on the podcast, yeah, bro. Yeah, I'm just clearing my name. Like, he getting fired. He just got laid off. What? <laughs> then he tries to come back and clean it up. Fool, I didn't get laid off. You right, I got fired, motherfucker. <laughs> but it was a bittersweet situation, man. And hey, that's what helped me, you know, create the Black Out podcast. So here we are. Say it again. Never no, go oh, ahead, okay. dog. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't be laughing when people get laid off. It's yeah. fucked up. Yeah. But anyways, he's doing great things. Shout out to ODM, yeah. Lighter Shaded Brown, still trying to keep it alive and shit. Still trying to keep it alive and shit. You know, that's kind of like, oh, man, you know, the way he said it was kind of like, oh, man, he's just trying. Like, you know, he can't keep his head above water. That's the way a lot of people will take it. That's the way I kind of took it. But then, again, you got to remember who's saying it. You know what I'm saying? So you can't let that affect you. Um, I'm bringing this to light because, you know, it. Someone sent it to me and they said, yo, you should react to this video. So I will. But I'm also going to sing my piece like, OK, whether I'm trying or not, man, I don't care how many viewers I got, how many subscribers. I, I mean, I care about my viewers, obviously, and subscribers. But, you know, if, if I'm not up there in the podcast world, mind you, these cats have been doing it for so long. We've only been doing it for like a year and a half. OK, but what I'm saying is, man, like there's other shit going on in my life that I got. You know what I'm saying? going on you know we still do the touring we're still doing music a lot of shade of brown still active but everything and anything i can use as a platform i'm going to use it from social media twitch instagram twitter all that youtube i'm going to do it tiktok i'm going to use it why because that's going to get me closer to you guys who get a chance to see what i'm putting out that's quality product if you will so, yeah, man. Uh, but, yeah, just for – it just sounded kind of like a downplay, even coming from this fool. Yeah. Um, do you think he heard you doing this? I'm assuming. Yeah. I'm assuming. Right. Yeah, you know, he started like, seeing you kind of pop off with yours, so he goes, let me let me fucking uh, I'm, I fuck think, around with it and see what I, it does. Yeah, I think yeah that he's right, see? And that's exactly what happened. Lucky was right about that. Like, I was like, shit, these parody and, – and mind you, when you're in radio, like, parodies were on before Chingo Bling. You know what I'm saying? People were doing like you go back to the prank calls. That's that's a form of a parody type style with the parody jingles and whatnot. And they still do them today. Some people may think they're old school, you know, because I believe that they are. You know, you're hard, which is probably another reason why I stopped doing it, which it is. And Chingo stopped stopped doing it. So 
stuff works for radio for entertainment so okay. I, I think okay. he was doing his job saying you know what i'm on the radio i gotta spice this shit up we gotta compete against other stations and I, I, you know so he made these little characters and these parodies and uh i mean they worked you know? by the way what the characters he's talking about which is the rappers that i had on there but if you listen to palatero man and you listen to i'm in love with your sister I created these characters called Nacho and Memo, and they're called the Stupid Fools. So before Fool, you know, Fools Gone Wild and Fool Community and Fool This and Fool That, your boy had that shit way long ago, my man. And if you know, you know, you from the IE, go listen to those songs, The Stupid Fools. And we bringing that shit back, watch. You know, they did what they were supposed to do. I just wanted to clear the air, that's not me. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Um, and so, I mean, bro, you have had uh, great success when you started doing your music thing, bro. I mean, what, what, you know, what, what, what were the peaks? I mean, you know, take us on that. It's a trip. Watching Lucky right here, like he's so sober. He's got his coffee. <laughs> but then you go back and watch the Lefty Gunplay video. And yeah, homie got his shirt off and he's all pedo, you know. And and. and I laugh because, you know, at the end of the day, he, I mean, we're all homies. You know what I'm saying? It's a podcast world. Um, can I call Lucky? Will he be here tomorrow if I'm stranded? I, I don't know. I don't, we're not homies in that sense. But it's a podcast world. You know what I mean? Lucky's a stand-up dude. Chingo's a stand-up dude. I just feel like, though, at the end of the day, we're all grown-ups. You know what I mean? We're all accountable. Uh, especially for... You know, shit that we put out in the world, we put out in the universe. You know what I'm saying? Like um, music that I've put out, like even in the late 90s, there's some music that I that I was doing that was not so lighter shade of brownie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I was working with Shadow, Mr. Shadow I was working with uh, Slow Pain, Rest in Peace, you know, uh, Conejo, Mauro, Brown Shady, all these different artists back because I was producing a lot of these cats. Right. Mr. Capone and so forth. But that was that gave me a chance to flex and become my own. ODM was the lyricist, bars. That that's all it really was. You know, it wasn't so happy like Sunday afternoon and Latin active and whatnot. So what I'm saying is there's some music, there's some songs that I put out. I don't regret, never do, because it's always the sign of the times. So when I put out that music, that's how I was feeling at that time. Now, am I gonna bump that shit now that I got kids? Probably, probably not. I wouldn't be the first to show them, but eventually my eight year old is going to come across my older music. You know what I'm saying? And he's probably going to bring it up and I'll tell him the same thing. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, once it's out there, though, that's the thing. It is out there. This whole thing with uh, Lucky and Lefty Gunplay, it's out there. And a lot of people are I see them commenting on, on Lucky and giving their you know thoughts like, hey, man, drugs. And the guy was doing shrooms. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that, taking shots at tequila. And then you mix that with a little weed. I don't know if he was getting high or not. He had this pen. But I know Lucky's known to get high and do all that. Whatever, homie. Like, we're not perfect. I get it. But as American Cholo said, quoted, because uh, I saw his reaction video. It's hard to be a business, though. Like, how are you going to want to, like, beat up your guests? You know what I'm saying? Imagine me trying to fight my guests. Like, there's just, there's no way. that that's And that's a different type of platform, by all means. Lucky is the king of homies. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's the homies podcast. The hood. It says it in the title. Hood stocks. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? This is the blockout. Like, we own the block. Same kind of thing. But the blockout means something different. It's a clock block out of block of time. You know, that I that we, that I have with my guests. It's not, you know, the black neighborhood. But um, anyway, you know, I think we're just all accountable when it comes to that. The professionalism's got to be there. Um, unless you just don't give a fuck, then that's understandable, too. You do you, you know what I mean? And we're going to do us at the, at the end of the day. Um, we're podcasters, but um, am I going to get fucked up and... and you know, start just disrespecting everybody. That's just not in my nature. I've done that off the mic and off camera. And um, I, I hated myself for that. But shit, when this is your business, this is your livelihood. You know what I'm saying? When you work, const not construction or I don't know, I think he was part of working at at the 
uh, I don't know what Lucky was doing. He just had a blue collar job, whatever, and he was doing this other side. I don't know if he's still doing it. I don't know. He might be doing Hoodstocks full time. I don't really follow him like that, but I know he's been doing this for a while. This is your bread and butter. Don't fuck it up, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, because word travels fast, and obviously this video went viral. The the lefty uh, one. So that's all I have to say about that. There's no bad love, you know what I mean? But I just had to bring this up between Chingo and, and Lucky and explain a little bit with the Chingo situation, you know, with the parody. Chingo and I, we're cool. I mean, I would like to think we are. I haven't seen him since back in those days, you know what I mean? But he seems like he's out of that parody thing, doing his own thing. You know, he's into the political stuff and all that looks like more power to the dude. Um but like I said, I have no bad blood towards any of these dudes at all. Never have, never will. But I mean, I will stay, you know, stand 10 toes down if I got something to say and speak on it. Or if I hear something that's not right about me or something that needs to be cleared up, not in an aggressive manner, never at that. But just to let that, you know, just to clear the air, then then I'm going to speak on it. You know, we, we, we speak facts. So shout outs to Anthony, uh, my, my guy Brito, for sharing this video. And there's your reaction and for, for the rest of you as well. Uh, please subscribe to this uh, podcast if you haven't had a chance to. Give me a big uh, thumbs up. Let me know what you think about this. I know normally we go live, but I just had to pre-record this one. It's been a busy week. Drop your um, comments down below, and I'll address them accordingly. All right? So that's it. Till then, peace.